Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. <laughs> well, that was a fun experiment. I hope I'm live. I am Joseph F. Alsis. I am the host of the Deadly Addictions channel. And this is a second experiment in live streaming to Facebook. On Twitter and most social media, I go by Addiction Master. So if you want to check out and look into what I do, feel free. This is a chance for me to unwind in this trying time to get better at my craft. So I've been doing recorded videos with the same format, getting better at sound quality, I hope, and the filters on Facebook, uh, OBS, and YouTube, just trying to get everything going. And now that I have this schedule and one of my part, most of my part-time jobs are gone and one of them is a delivery service. So it's a little crazy up and down. And with the general worry about family members that have vulnerability to the virus, I've been a little burned out, but nothing much. I'm healthy and for the time being, yay. But I've been doing a lot of artwork, helping out a friend with a channel, making a little money. And I thought a good way to discipline myself and get some practice would be to do some Facebook live streams. So the theme will be I go over Facebook, look through some of the wonderful content and posts from people. Uh, that should be amazingly fun. And share with you awesome content in this time of viruses and social isolation and distancing. All right, so let me go to a Facebook page. Oh, I can do a coronavirus update. So I will give the numbers on the coronavirus. As of today, uh, a couple of minutes ago, I refreshed the page. It is from the Worldometer. And they have a count. So, the coronavirus cases, 594,377. And you can view that by county, if you wanted to. Deaths, 27,250. Recovered, 133,006. So, I'll repeat that. Coronavirus cases, 594,377, 27,250 deaths, and 133,006 recovered. We'll go into another category, and we'll look at active cases. There are 434,121 active cases. In mild condition, 410,606, 95%. In serious or critical condition, 23,515, 5%. Closed cases, 160,256 cases which have had an outcome. Recovered, 133,006, 83%. That's 27,250, 17%. So there's your coronavirus update. Valid from what I can tell, and it is presented in a format you can update constantly. You refresh the page, and there you go. Information you are informed, highbrow elevated content here on the Delhi Dictions channel. Amazing! All right, so I go on Facebook and I'm going to scroll through my feed my timeline all righty i haven't been mentioning names but i like to joke around and shit on people's beliefs and stuff so that's normal and i will see some political stuff some medical stuff information 
All right, let's see. Someone posted, shared something. On 317, New York State had 729 cases. On 323, there were 20,875. Got it now? Okay, so this would be something you can do if you wanted to do a test. I could confirm and see if this is fake news, if someone is spreading misinformation by taking these stats and looking them up. Maybe I'll do it, but it's just nothing else. But for now, there you go. Got it now? Good. Moving on. Uh, always fun to see family stuff. That's cool. What do we have here? Ooh. This was fun because this is a weird one. It's There's a dog who uses large buttons program with recordings of words to express her desires and it's i've been i did a little bit of a deep dive i wanted to see if this was fucking real so a uh, speech pathologist teaches her dog 29 human words so apparently the gist is the dog's supposed to walk up to it hit a certain buttons and go i want to go outside or play or buy i mean that's what i'm seeing just from the thumbnail and the article so that's interesting Fucking dogs are getting smarter than us. Also wondering if the fucking mouse is going to be here clicking constantly, but... Alright, what's this? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Someone posted about people... Healed in Italy. Now, first off, my alarm bells go off by healed. You mean Recovered? Would be better unless you're putting some insinuation that some power was involved that healed them. Okay, whatever. Uh, family stuff, cute, always. Uh, pet lover, always posting cool pet stuff. Oh, this is probably going to make me cry. So, no. Uh, Another one, why highly intelligent people make the worst leaders. Fuck. There goes my leadership role. We have a science post. An x-ray observatory puts string theory to the test. Ooh, I love doing deep dives on those. Nerd. Yes, I am a nerd. Ooh, food. All right. Food's not bad. I like food. My timeline here and there. But I'm so fucking picky. It don't matter. Like, you know. All right. More food. Mmm. Even better. I take the peas off the fucking table. Don't have it touching anything. Okay. The mashed potatoes, take them off too. But if they're touching, that's okay. But you don't want the fucking peas touching the mashed potatoes and the fucking, what is that? Uh, turkey or pork? Something. Get your shit together, people. This is fucking Facebook, right? Fucking Christ. Oh, here, here's a great one. Oh, this is fucking awesome. And I'm not sure how I'm related to this person, how I know this person, but it's just fucking awesome. Okay. We have a picture of a doctor wearing his blue, his gloves, and his mask and his little hat. However, he's sitting on the globe of Earth and his wings are sprouted out around him. So it's like if Angel from the X-Men was sitting on a ball globe the size of a huge beach ball in a darkly lit with a light shining down on him in some Matrix-like foyer of a building. And it's to show that our doctors and nurses and caretakers and the people out there working are the real angels. Oh, it just hits me. It just gets me. All right. Bullying isn't okay at any age. Can I get three people to share? Well, not me, but go ahead. Bullying isn't okay at any age. Got it. But I don't get manipulated into posting bullshit. All right. New Yorkers are planning a citywide clap for essential workers tonight. What the fuck does that mean? A clap. Okay. All right. As long as it's not a fucking disease or something. Because that, that was like a slang for a fucking... Something nasty back in the day, I think. You 
fucking mashed potatoes. Listen, I don't care. They, they, they don't bother me touching, but when everything's involved and things get touching, food touches this. This is fucking ridiculous. All right. I did the virus update. It is 8.57 p.m. You're listening to the Deadly Addictions channel. And if you're not getting your news from the Deadly Addictions channel, you're not getting news. Uh, someone who made that up. I think I got it right. <laughs> All right. So I guess the, I gotta, I'm going to hit this fucking thing, okay? I got to see what the clap it planned. Well, this is not prayer. Thoughts and prayers. Bullshit. Wasted fucking time. All right. A citywide clap of essential workers. Uplifting the space of support. People across Europe and UK have been taking to their windows and balconies to clap and whistle in support of healthcare workers. All right. It's something we haven't seen here in the U.S. until now. The leading initiative to bring it to New York City at 7 p.m. tonight. Oh, oops. Oopsie. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, two hours too late. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah, clap it. I get it. You know, that's not bad. That's pretty cool. Alrighty, the silver lining to the coronavirus pandemic: kindness is spreading faster than ever. Sure, okay, I get it. It's a humankind story. Make me feel. Ooh, Star Trek. Nerd. That's my post, by the way. It's... <clears throat> All right. Uh, no, I don't really want to hear anything from Peter Boghan seeing. All right. I see something for help. Can you spare a minute to help? Uh, eh, probably not. I find all these things to be bullshit. Muhammad Ali's always got some really cool stuff to say. Loved him when I was a kid. Great Barrier Reef suffers third mass bleaching event in five years, but it's not all bad news. See? Some climate change could be working and not really death to the world. All right, let's see. Uh, someone put an ironic post. My overprotective Catholic mother just told me this lockdown is God's way of telling me I go out too much. Sorry, everybody. This entire pandemic is my fault for not staying home. My bad. Yeah, fucking believers are really fucking stupid sometimes. All right. Let's see, what's this? Uh, No, that joke won't translate. Oh, this is cool. Graphene typically costs $200,000 per ton. Now scientists can make it from trash. Ah, play with those molecules and atoms. Rearranging them. Ingenuity, science, ooh. Ah, uh, okay, I get it. No, may God bless so and so. Nah, I don't think so. It's, there's no God. It's all bullshit. You just fucking indoctrinated. Yeah, you. Um, more humankind stories. They're fun. They uplifting. They make you a little sad, but in a good way. Star Trek. Yeah, that's me. Boost confidence at work by finding new, different hobbies. And my favorite vape company always gives the perfect wake and bake bucket list picks. And these are places to live and stuff. It's just amazing. But don't translate here. Unless I was planned and I would just put things on the screen. But this is all just non-stressful, turning on the mic, blabbing stuff, building up my voice and technique. All right, here's one from my job. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to post that. Oh, cool. All right. All right. We have corona, coronavirus explained easily. This is one of those funny, ironic ones, I think. So let's go with it. Karen got infected yesterday, but she won't know until 14 days later. Karen thinks she's healthy and is infecting 10 persons per day. These 10 persons think they are okay. They travel, go out, and infect 100 persons. These 100 persons think they are healthy and keep infecting 1,000 persons. No one knows who is okay or who can infect you. Do you understand why it is important to stay at home? Be responsible. Stay in quarantine. Okay. Well, so logic seems okay to some extent. Mm, all right. You heard Karen. Well, it's not who posted it, but I don't want to say the names. All right. Ooh, this is cool. This dad designed a baby safety pod to protect his two-month-old son during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's a picture of this woman with uh, a looks like a reverse backpack, and the front of it is this clear plastic-looking uh, backpack with the baby in it. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Hey, got to protect the young. All right, more. Let's see. Uh, Jesus gets an F in science. Yeah, well, who even knows if he was real? Okay, that's promotion. All right, that's a joke. Yeah, it's not that funny, but okay, I get you. Yoda, baby Yoda. Everybody loves baby Yoda. Oh, here we go. All right, this is a, what is this? Uh, oh, this is a message to Trump. President Donald Trump. I would like to go on record demanding that all holders of public office, parentheses, senators, house representatives, governors, and mayors, etc., be denied pay during this disaster. They have made the choice to stop the pay of millions of Americans, and they should be held to the same exact standards as us citizens. We the citizens can, capitals, so it's yell, but I'm not going to yell. We the citizens cannot afford to pay their salaries at this time due to their decisions. Bam! Explanation point. All Americans should share this and make this demand of our government. This, that is our money. Well, again, I'm not manipulating to share and shit, especially shit that says share this, do this, or to make you read to the bottom. But I get, I get it. I get it. Trump, clown, orange man, bad. Cool. Uh, promo for a show. Uh, four relationship problems that could be linked back to early childhood. Well, yeah, you can go deep into that. This one is a COVID-19 could signal wider recognition of urgent world disease dangers. Well, it seems like we have good news because these religious figures are getting together for special prayers. But what they're saying is that God is giving us this virus for punishment for our sins. So they need to do special prayers for us. You get it, right? This makes sense. I know, you know, I don't know why if enough people don't do it, it just should happen. But hey, you know, fuck logic and reason. All right, so we're responsible for the disease and our sins are making it spread. Pray, do your doctrines and dogma stuff and just wallow in delusion it should work out 
psilocybin markedly boosts feelings of self-transcendence during meditation. Fuck yeah. It's a science post. The more research conducted on psychedelics, the closer we get to new therapeutic models. Fucking A. Finally. Drugs, the deadly addictions is a, you know, I've been onto something for years. They're going to use psychedelics to help with PTSD, anxiety, a whole range of uh, disorders and problems people have. And it's, the studies look great. So all the arrows, all the evidence is pointing a certain way. Things could change, but that's how it works in science. You just don't believe something and have faith in it. And you follow the studies. And then eventually the studies will change the consensus of science in general. And then there will be uh, general knowledge in the fields. So keep going. The studies look more good than bad. If you take my, if you trust my word. I ain't biased. I ain't no fucking drugs. Come on, stop it. I can't do that shit. It's no good. All right, I, I like watching these like life hack videos. They're pretty cool. So I like seeing them posted. And you find out shit you could do around your house, and you're like, "What the fuck? I could do what?" So that's pretty cool. And there's a couple here. It's like a video. Pretty cool. Only a fifth of the countries provide sick pay. The big challenges for work in a pandemic. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm fucked. Out of the way I make money, there's really only one way now. It's part-time, and it's fucked. <laughs> but, you know, fuck it. You know, who gives a shit? You know, you know, fuck the freeloaders and stuff. You know, fuck them. All right. More Star Trek. Nerd. All right, this lady has a big head in this video. So I'm a little nervous. I get freaked out. Oh, I shared a post with a friend. It was the old WWE match. Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. It was like my favorite wrestling match ever. I watched it in a bar on East 15th and Avenue. Right next to the donut shop. I fucking loved that. It was awesome. Ultimate Warrior is one of my favorites. And it's the whole match, which is pretty fucking cool. It's called WWE Full Matches. Fucking roid it up. All right. This was a funny video. <laughs> Family member posted, and it's, um, this chick is, you know, I guess everybody's locked up, and <laughs> she keeps getting, like, I guess her husband or something keeps giving her more tasks to do. So he tells her to, you know, fix my pants. And there's this big rip in the back. Like, it's just huge. She sticks her face through it. It's gigantic. And she rants about, you know, you're dead to me. <laughs> you know, throw it the fuck out. Uh, what was the quote she used? He thinks I'm Geppetto. <laughs> like, you could just perform miracles. But it's a great rant. It TikTok done well. Very well. Uh, this woman is a riot. Follow her on Instagram. Yeah, man. If I cared about Instagram, probably. I guess that's the uh, new things kids do. Cha -cha. You know, my banging content. And I don't know. I can't fucking. I can't even think about adding a new thing to my life. I'm on the precipice of fucking collapsing every day. Every day is a fucking struggle to find fresh air and fucking get out of this fucking dark murky waters but yeah i'll add instagram to my fucking repertoire yeah fuck out of here I, I actually got an instagram i started everything like between 2009 and 2012 prepping when i was writing my book and well first you know we started role-playing the adventures and i was fleshing out biographies for the characters but by 2012 the book is published i'm at comic con so in that span i'm looking around at everything all right, what else we got? We got an old school pick. Yes, young, young pick of my friends. Some of them. Getting old. 
It is 9.11 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020. You listen to the Deadly Addictions channel with your host, Joseph F. Olsis, also Addiction Master on most social media, bringing you the important content you need in your lives now. In these times where you're stuck at home, you got me. <laughs> so all my Facebook friends and family who can hear me in the stray maniac who's looking for live streams hello welcome and to the fake friends and the family that doesn't really want to be family but they just don't want to unfollow me or ban me hello also love you love you all comic book for kids i love this place is i always like their stuff the idea is great what they do is they get comic books volunteers and they ship them out to hospitals all around the world for children i love it Comic book for kids. Always got great posts. Another family thing. Good on you. Uh, show news about another show. Uh, ironic meme. It seems as if the world eases over population with a devastating virus every century. <laughs> we see patterns. All right, there's some data posts here showing graphs with red circles and, you know, epicenters of the virus and the time frame of how it spread and, you know, New York now becoming a bigger part of the problem or whatever. Oh, another one in the same vein as before. This is from the American Psychiatric Association, and it's very, well, it's not verifying, it's adding to the credence of the other post. Could psychedelics be used to treat mental illness? Fuck yeah. I mean, hello. I'd be a, I'd be a basket case. Most of my friends would be fucking basket cases. There's a reason why we fucking escape reality. And this fucking stupid notion people have of addiction. Stop fucking buying the hype. It's a fucking addiction if it's ruining and impacting your life. Not if you're enjoying smoking weed every day and doing your shit. Do your fucking heroin and take care of your fucking family and kids and work. That's bullshit. But yes, could psychedelics be used to treat mental illness? Yes. Yes. Uh, This is an interesting one. We'd rather have fair inequality than unfair equality, research shows. Yeah, this could be a little flimsy. I don't know if I do a deep dive, but we'll see. All right, what's this? Oh, this is someone making fun of, I believe, Trump. And what did he say? Oh, I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. You know, you go into major hospitals, sometimes they'll have two ventilators. And now all of a sudden, they're saying, can we order 30,000 ventilators? President Donald Trump. Getting my vape ready. So, would I check all this and make sure he said it? I guess people could. A lot of this is also fake. Not this post particularly, but posts like this. I think Trump's a clown. He's a fucking buffoon, however. Lots of quotes and things are just kind of twisted a little. Not that I give a shit to defend him, but I can't say he said that for sure. However, it does sound, if it sounds stupid enough, you you believe it, so. Yeah, there goes another problem with Trump. All 
All right, here's an article I think if I looked into, my instincts tell me would be sort of fake. So there's an article posted by somebody, and it says, Nurse dies in New York hospital where workers are reduced to using trash bags as protective medical gear. Now, if I'm correct, that's bullshit because the garbage bag picture was a mock-up and wasn't a real situational pick. I think it was someone posting like this is what's going to happen type thing now i don't know this is just something that came across my purview i just saw it didn't look into it i'm not looking deep into this but i think there's a chance that the garbage bags used as protection is bullshit but just being you know neutral and trying not to be biased i would love to fucking add to the mistakes we made and beat on somebody but i can't say this is true Maybe the nurse did die where they reduced using, I see that's the part, using trash for them. I don't know, but interesting. Interesting. All right, here's another one from the APA. Fear can spread from person to person faster than the coronavirus, but there are ways to slow it down. There you go. You hear that, people? You hear that? Fear can spread from person to person faster than the coronavirus. But there are always to slow it down. Be informed. All right, this one's funny. It's a meme, but it's four separate pictures of different places, and they're going to prove a point. So the first one, England. Paying 80% of people's salary. Denmark. Paying 75% of people's salary. Canada. Sending everybody 2000 a month. USA. A one-time $1,200 check for some. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Here's a friend's pick. All right, another show news, not my show, someone else's. And this is, I think, something that would correlate with the other story. Trump rejects New York's plea for ventilators. I don't believe you need that many. Yeah, you know, um, I think if you have fucking people and I just... I just don't know. I mean, you got to trust certain people in in your chain of command. And is, is someone in the chain of command going, look, they're bullshitting. Here's the fucking, here's what they need. They need uh, 13,000 vent. Like, I don't know that. Or is he just blatantly bypassing any advice and just assuming and using his intuition because that's what he seems like to be, an intuition machine and, and a very stupid one, so. But that's all ego and all that shit. Don't fuck with me with the times again, okay? I don't really care. It's 9.20 p.m. Friday, 3.27, You're listening to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Olsis, also known as Addiction Master. And there you have it. Awesome, this fucking content. I mean this is this is what this is what people need. So I don't know. <sighs> Rejects New York's plea for ventilators. Hmm. See and there goes another thing about people. Uh, can you explain to me why Americans spend more on healthcare than any other country that our medical workers are wearing trash bags because they don't have a proper gear? See, now, I think if the previous story is a false story, it's made so people will spread memes like this. So you can make uh, something cool over a garbage bag and, you know, just keep piling on. So I don't know. I'd have to do a check. Maybe I'll do it after I scroll through my... I get to the bottom, I'll go back and choose something. So here's another one. It's half true and half weird. Okay. So the image is of a cruise ship. And it says from USA Today, 
Coronavirus stayed on the surfaces for up to 17 days on Diamond Princess Cruise, CDC says. Now, that could be fucking alarming to some. And as a matter of fact, the person who posted, someone put a big wow emoji. You know how they put the wow emojis? Okay. Now, if you look at this, it should be shit scary because coronavirus stayed on the surfaces for 17 days on Diamond Princess Cruise, CDC says. However... As soon as you open the article and you read it, it makes a clarification that this was a test done on purpose. It wasn't coronavirus, a live virus. It was part of the material they found, which they did not disinfect, did not clean on purpose to do a test. So the live virus was not on the surfaces for 17 days. They're saying that the genetic material that it was attached to stayed for 17 days and showed signs of the virus, but not that it was live. So you post this. Oh, shit. What happened? I saw a post three days ago that said three hours in the air, 24 hours on plastic and whatever that fucking thing was, uh, three days on metal surfaces and stuff. Yeah, that's probably right. The rule of thumb, there's always outliers. That's probably right. Okay, so they'll keep that. But now you see this and you're like, oh, what? What? 17 days? We're fucking doomed? And No, that's not what it is. However, if you don't clarify it, if you don't put the clarification in your comments, what did you do? You just posted something that says bullshit. So there you go. This is why I go through some of the things and I look at them and I take time to to understand what am I what what am I seeing? Fake news? Am I am I, buy, am I just gonna share this because oh the fucking headline is shocking and it's 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 uh, it's giving me new information? Did you read the article? Did you even glance at it? So good on you. I love you. You're one of my awesome family members, but it doesn't matter. So I've seen people post this and I think it's probably good. And it says Mount Sinai is looking for people who have recovered from the virus. For anyone who has tested positive and was symptomatic for COVID-19, COVID-19, now are 10 to 14 days symptom free, please see message below from Mount Sinai Hospital. And then it goes into, um, you know, when you recover from these things, you get a boosted immunity and they're using that plasma. And it it helps. So if you hear if you hear that, if you've got been diagnosed and you're ten to fourteen days symptom three, they could use people's help, but plasma is needed. There you go. Helping each other. Uh what did a friend tell me recently? Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, look at this fucking content. I mean, come on. Stuck here in the fucking house. Social distancing, turn on your mic, provide people with an awesome sounding voice and such amazing content. This is uh, this is just truly a time in our lives that we can all appreciate. All right, so let's go back to more nonsense. Well, some of it's nonsense, bro. All right, yes, a friend posted some art. He's good at it. He helped me with my book. I shared it. I'm going to use it as part of the themes when I get a chance. All right, what do we got here? My friend's picks, more picks. All right, so got to the bottom before it starts to refresh again. And I'm now going back in time. You can time travel with Facebook, by the way, in case you're wondering, it is not hard. It involves a mouse wheel and it's amazing. You could see like images and pictures of the past like unfolding. You can even listen to me from a couple of days ago doing a live podcast. It's fucking crazy. It's like, what? I have this friend who's in England that we communicate and she's in the future. It's fucking blows my mind. 
But then I got another friend who's in the past, so it's well, fucking be time travel. We're always time traveling, by the way. And I'm gonna burn this vape out. It should be the last charge. I don't know if I have to mute again though. Yes, I'm vaping flowers, uh, beautiful, wonderful flowers. Well, that's it, flowers, that's right. All right, so what interested me? So, you know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do this dog thing. I, I, I wanna see what this is about. I looked at it not too deeply, but I'm curious in where this leads. So supposedly this dog can communicate its desires using buttons pre-programmed with words. So I guess if you have a green button and you keep saying, uh, you know, uh, out, 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 and you train, it, it'll know to hit that button. And we can, uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, what a shock, said no dog. Uh, yeah, well, it's, I've had dogs. I actually learned how to train dogs when I was younger. Stella speaks by stepping on large buttons, program recordings. The dog expresses her desires, comments on household events, and her offers opinions. See this? See this? This is this put makes red alarm bells go off in my head. It's probably a more simpler thing that they're just elaborating on, but still probably amazing. All right. It's obvious that dogs have the capacity to understand human words. Family canines respond to out, walk, car both helpful and entertaining for a human, and a source of significant excitement for a pooch. Each owner of family teaches his dog vocabulary that pedigreeably learns. With the exception of no and bad, of course. Ha 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 ha, get it? Yeah. So if dogs can understand our words, what kind of communication would be possible if they were able to avoid them as well? Okay. Speech pathologist, Christina Hunger. Okay. Uses argumentative and alternative communication, AAC, devices in her job, and decided to see if one could be used to give her dog Stella a chance to use her words. The results of her experiments are amazing. Now, I want to point out there's no links in here yet to confirm anything with any studies or anything. So I'm just saying that now. Not that I haven't gotten to it, but that's what I'm looking for. Stella's vocabulary is up to 29 words, and she could fluidly string them together to express her desires and her feelings. Okay, so there's a video. Hmm. All right, so there's a video which could be faked easily. So, just going to be neutral. Yeah, it's... Okay, so... Continuing on past the video, Hunger has a blog explaining what's going on with Stella, who's an 18-month-old Katahula Blue Healer mix. The blog is called Hunger for Words. Her experiment was inspired by a quotation of Rosemary Crossley's. Not being able to speak is not the same as not having anything to say. A deep. It's fucking deep. And you heard it here. 9.30 p.m. Friday, 327-2020 on the Deadly Addictions channel. Not being able to speak is not the same as not having anything to say. Fuck. That's just... Fuck my head. Alright. Hunger explains that every human has two sorts of language capacities. First is receptive language and ability to understand the meaning of words and sentences we hear. Those as noted clearly have receptive language. Expressive language is how we communicate to others using words and sentences, written words, gestures, and facial expressions. Okay. Dogs regularly express themselves by barking, growling, with speech like moaning, sighing, and of course, jumping in excitement. Hunger considers these all to be expressive language, canine style, which suggests they share our desire to communicate. Okay. Um, see, desire... You know, when you use these words, because it looks like an opinion piece about someone's blog and the work they're doing, so fine. But when you use, like, desire, you could really be saying it's an evolutionary trait. Yeah, you're going to call it desire. 
but words like that just I note mentally. For the mechanics of helping Stella use human words for expressing herself without a human vocal part, I turn to AAC technology as a pathway forward. AAC devices are computer-based instruments that prevent that present symbols for words as big, touchable buttons. When a button is touched, the associated word sounds. Speech challenged children learn to trigger these words they want the machine to say for them. Put them together in sentences and allow them to begin to, as Hunger says, experience the power of language. Okay, so you have children with um, speech challenge challenges and they could learn how to say I am hungry and it could string together these buttons and, and it's giving them it's a cognitive behavior therapy it'll it'll give them the right pathways and help them learn and speak that sounds good sounds legit so far in that sense To get started with Stella, Hunger and her fiancé Jake programmed a single button on a simple speed soundboard. The press of a button plays back the word outside, a concept right in the dog's wheelhouse. Alright, every time we took Stella outside, we pushed outside the button before opening the door. After a few weeks of modeling, Stella showed us she was aware of what was happening. When I would ask outside, Stella want to go outside, she began looking down at the button, looking up at me, and barking. As in SLP, I knew this was a huge step in the right direction. Soon, Stella was pressing the button herself when she wanted to go out. That's fucking... That's fucking... It's pretty crazy. Other buttons were quickly programmed either with words the couple frequently use with Stella or things they thought she herself might want to communicate, such as eat, water, play, walk, no, come, help, buy, love you. The results were startling. All right, so I haven't hit those links yet to her blog, so I can't tell you whatever, but this could all be bullshit. Just, just saying. If Jake and I were distracted, Stella began saying play repeatedly until we threw her toy or engaged in a tug of war. Stella would walk to her water bowl, notice it was empty, and say water. If we had finished dinner and didn't mention going for a walk yet, Stella would say walk multiple times while staring at us. If her toy was stuck under the couch, she would say help and stand right where she needed Jake or I to look. When our friends were putting their jackets on or were standing by the door, she would say bye to them. Jake and I was simply amazed. All right, fucking A. That's fucking crazy. And that's awesome. I mean, even if you're not going to give them, uh, raise their levels of, you know, an sentient being, they're able to associate these things, which seems fucking nuts. Fucking nuts. Wow. Like I said, though, you got to be careful with this stuff. I don't care about the fucking time. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> um, this could seem like really something groundbreaking. But, taking it with a grain of salt, as time went by, she began using language in a manner similar to the way we do. She's been learning words since later. Okay, so they give it a time frame. Not restricting words to her needs. She began providing commentary. This first happened when I was watering my plants and Stella said water while watching me, even though her water dish was full. All right, creeping me to fuck out. Most exciting is that Stella now puts words together for more complex communication, including reprimands for her humans. For example, animals couldn't care less about our clock adjustments in the fall and spring. One afternoon, Recalls hunger. Shortly after the daylight savings time, Stella said eat repeatedly about 3 o'clock. When Jake and I did not feed her dinner, early she said, love you, no, and walked into the other room. Another example, as time she pressed Jake, want, come, and planted herself by the door. Upon Jake's return, she hit the happy button and rolled over for a tummy rub. Creeping me the fuck out, and I can see fucking movies coming out, you know, doggy shines or something.
We've seen examples most notably of gorilla cocoa, of animals who've acquired the ability to communicate using human words. And dog owners would hardly doubt that their dog's affinity for receptive language, expressive language, doesn't seem like that much of a leap. Yeah, okay, well, fucking people believe in stupid things too, like gods and stuff. Even the smartest people believe the stupidest fucking things. Um, in addition, scientists consider average dog intelligence to be roughly similar to a human two-year-old's. Okay, and there's a link for that, so we can confirm that, because I bet that's fucking right. And it's time, right about the time toddlers start talking. You can keep up with the progress. And Okay, I'm just going to do a quick check on that blog. Because if this isn't, like, with a university and doing meticulous tests, I don't know. All right, so let me check this out. Hmm. All right, so now I'm not an expert. I'm not a fucking academic. I'm not some fucking PhD. I have no fucking degrees, PC. But when I like to look at sites that verify things and bring me to studies, you can kind of tell if they're, you know, somewhat reliable. All right, this is already not good. This is a blog with pictures and share abilities. The dog is prominent with the buttons they've arranged. And they have posts about Stella. They got videos. Uh, I'm gonna say shit. All right, you know what? Let me go to. Uh, let me look a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to post. What I'm what I'm trying to decide is where do I put something like this? Is like, oh yeah, tell my friends all this this cool story and you know what dogs can do, or is it just some fucking you know? Suedo scientific bullshit that they just trained the dog and they're just spinning it a certain way. All right, so here we go. New skills. These are. She okay, so she has pencil notebook notes. It looks like. Yeah. I, Do you have any words for hunger? I want to see. I want to see peer review. I want to see um, two or three doctors who have. Um, okay, so what you could do is you take this, you take her notes, right? So she, had, let's say she's on the up and up. She's got this new thing. What has to happen is this information has to be able to be replicated. So what you do is you take exactly what she did, all her documents, even if it's on paper, that's fine, and pencil a team of scientists or you know people in the right field, get the right people, and they duplicate the test. And then you want to see if that test can be duplicated. So can you get another dog? And yes, there might be you know outliers, and you know, some can't, some whatever, but it has to be verified in some way. So like you can get stuff from her that has like PDFs and it looks like uh, plenty of videos and uh, information here and there, but it's nothing that seems to be verifiable and repeatable. It's almost like, you know, she has these breakthroughs and then videotapes them. I'm giving the benefit of that principle of charity. She believes everything she's posting. She's being honest. However, next steps have to take have to be taken i can't 
go around saying, uh, this is what dogs can do. Because this is too easy to be f- fucked with. I'm sorry. Right away on the normal scientific uh, studies page, if I was looking at this from an angle of a different scientific journal or something, as soon as I'm going through it, if it's an opinion piece, they say, oh, this is from Scientific America or whatever it is. And then when you go there, you can see how dry and plain it is because it's most likely the lead technician or researcher just putting the facts out. And then when you go even further to that link, it's all numbers and equations and it gets fucking ridiculous. However, it's a method I use to make sure I'm not just spreading bullshit information. This is such a good hearted story. I want to fucking share it and post it. I think I did share this, but I might have said something like, hmm, interesting. Because I don't know if I can, you know, I just don't know if I can vouch for this in that way. I would love to, but fucking dogs can communicate with us. Oh, great. I don't know. And a speech language pathologist. I don't know how much training that is. I'm not exactly sure. And I'm going to, like I said, principal charity, good benefit of the doubt. This person is good on the up and up. She's got um, good intentions and she's doing this thing and she's doing it by the numbers. Fine. But what's presented on her website to the link does not give me the confidence that it's repeatable um, and being looked at by other peer review scientists and or other speech language pathologists. So great story. If it's true, let's keep up with it. Imagine you can have these little, you buy this play device for your dog and it has, a, let's say, just say nine buttons and it comes pre-programmed with, let's say, water, eat, outside, whatever. And obviously, it's from what she says, it does make sense because you can teach your dog to sit, right? Come here, stand. And when you get even more training, I was young. My girlfriend's father would train dogs. And one time he got called to help these people who had a parking lot, a car lot, and the dogs were loose. And sometimes the train is... On purpose, the owner will not let the dogs be nice to the people who work there. So the dogs get loose or whatever. Everybody jumps on top of the cars and has to fucking hide or, you know, stay away from them. And they had called my girlfriend at the time's father. Anyway, so you can give them description. You can, they can become very disciplined. Dogs like to be taught things and learn them. So it's always good to train your dog. But how much can this work? So I could see it already. Okay, so you got the button before you open the door, or you, like you can even do leash, right? So you can get leash. You hit the button, leash. You put the leash on the dog, and you do that for a certain amount of times. It's called modeling. And after a while, the dog associates it with leash. And then you hit the outside, and you open the door. You know, this way, if you have a backyard, the dog can hit the button for outside, and you open the door, let it go out and play in the backyard. If this is true and this is how like dogs would communicate these desires, that'd be fucking great. That'd be insane. I could see um, a real cool method on how an everyday person can train their dog. So in that case, I think it would be fun. I just don't know if I want to double down and say this is amazing and this is going to happen soon. And It's a fun, good story, but... I'm a little hesitant because you got videos that could be easily edited. You could fudge with the way you describe things or, you know, if it's a opinion piece on the blog, that person could be twisting things and you go to the blog and she's got notes and I don't know. Pretty interesting to me. I love the story, but I don't know. I can't really, I can't say for sure. So let's refresh this. I'm going to get a bowl ready. It is 9.46 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020. And you're listening to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am your host, Joseph F. Olsis, addiction master on most social media. And I am providing much needed content in these trying times. I see this going around a lot on multiple platforms, Twitter and Facebook, but there's a fucking Tiger King limited series 
or Tiger King documentary type fucking circus thing. And it's a <laughs> it's a guy with a tiger, but it looks like it's you know hilarious. It's popular because it's not only one person or one family member. I see it being duplicated all around, like and on Twitter too. Maybe I'll do a what's a Twitter live stream? What is that? Periscope, I think. Maybe I'll get on that too, and I'll do fucking I'll do my feed in that also. I'll experiment with that. Per I think it's Periscope. If one of my thousands of fans could confirm that for me, I'm sure it's already being filled out in my comment section. You know, that's how that's how that's how it works, right? You know. All right. You are listening to the swallowing sounds of the Deli Dixon channel. Oh shit, I just found a, a voicemail on my phone. I gotta pay more attention to this. And it's from fucking. Four in the morning yesterday? What the fuck is that? Oh, two in the morning. One one fifty eight AM. Hmm, that's interesting. Right. I'll call them back. My internet, my fucking internet, my phone service provider is going to be connected. I'm going to be connected for free 4G LTE data through 514. That's nice of them, I guess. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, where was I? Bird song opera. Okay. Trust that place either. But, uh, Twenty inspiring nature words you didn't know you needed. Oh, that's got to be fucking content, right? Everybody needs twenty nature words. So up next, twenty nature words that you didn't know you needed. It's gonna be fucking amazing. Yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, come on, get to the shit already. Uh, oh, fuck. I gotta be a fucking linguist? What is this? A. Gunuig. It's in Gaelic. The steep slope of a scowling expression. Human nature is a part of nature. Okay, gotta know how to fucking pronounce it. Next one, Adnaster in Shetland. Large waves or waves coming in, coming after a succession of lesser ones. Surfers know the danger of being caught in one of these cycles. Oh, fuck's sake. All right, this one I can do. I can fucking do this. I know it. I got confidence in this one. Ready? <clears throat> Blinter, Northern Scots. A cold dazzle. See? You got that one. You nailed it. Nailed it. All right. This fucking shitty fucking site with its fucking pop-ups and shit. Fuck off. I got this one, too. Urgh, I think I got this. Bobbles. North Sea Coast. Choppy short waves roused by wind. I'm fucking adding some of these to my fucking lingo. This going to be fucking awesome. All right, come on, stop fucking with me, it's your stupid shit. All right, so we did bobbles. I don't know. I think I got this. Katian. First slight ruffling 
of the water after a calm. Oh, that's fucking, you can hear it right now. All right, I got this one too. I think so. Dringy, Lincolnshire, light rain that still manages to get you soaking wet. Okay, Dringy. I don't know what the fuck this says. E I T E it, and there's a fucking dash on the E. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know what that means. Sorry. The practice of placing quartz stones in moorland streams so that they would sparkle in moonlight. And that's why I attract salmon. That's like the land of the lost, right? How they used that portal. They had the fucking things and they would shine. Ah, oh, that's cool. All right, this should be easy. Feedings. Feet ings. F E E T I N G S. Suffolk. Footprints of creatures as they appear in the snow. Oh, that's. Fuck. This is my fucking index cards. Uh, feedings. Ugh. All right. I got this one too. Flinchin. Scots. Deceitful promise of better weather. Fuck what? Flinchin. Deceitful promise. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I get it. I get it. Glassel. Britain. A seaside pebble. Which was shiny and interesting when wet, which is now a lump of rock. Oh, fucking Christ. How many of these did I say? 12. I didn't do 12 yet. Oh, hot Spong. <laughs> East Anglia. I don't even want, I'm afraid to even read this. I don't even know. Hot Spong does not sound fucking proper sudden power of heat felt when the sun comes up from under a wind shifted cloud oh yeah i know that feeling i would not call it hot spong and if i did and then my friends were near me i'm sure i'd get a fucking beaten so east anglia good on you but i'm not fucking adding that I'm not all right Kimmeridge, Britain. The light breeze that blows through your armpit hair when you are stretching out sunbathing. <laughs> oh, shit. Kimmeridge. All right. I might write that one down, okay? I just might. All right. <sighs> Lunky. Scots. <laughs> Hole deliberately left in a wall for an animal to pass through. Ah, you know what? That's going in. Fucking lunky. I like it. I like it. I just got to learn how to pronounce it in a fucking Scottish voice. Who's my fucking guy I go to for the fucking accents? That's Justin, right? All right, so I'm going to get Justin to fucking copy some of these. Although they all sound like Arnold, but you know, I don't I got I got take what I got. Lunky, oh fucking great. Skittle Galloway. To throw flat stones so that they skim on the surface of water. Oh. So skimming rocks is okay, I get it. So Skittle. Gotcha. It's fucking awesome. Way to fucking go. It's Galloway. Come on, this is not fucking twelve of them already? I've been doing this for a fucking hour. Oh, now we're getting ones invented by people? Slogger. Invented by Gerald Gerard Manley Hopkins. Am I gonna get on here if I come up with some? Sucking sound made by waves against the ship's side. Oh, fucking Christ. Squatted. Oh Jesus Christ. Splash with mud by a passing vehicle. Really? Kent? Where it comes from? Squatted? Splash with mud by a passing vehicle. Okay, I'm finding that hard to fucking believe. But okay. 
Sure, I got you. Fucking wow. Did it start with 12 and it went up to 20? Is that what fucking happened? Oh, it was 20. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I committed to 20. I'm going to write that down. Fucking pay attention. Shit. All right. Stravag. Stravag. Scots. To wander aimlessly unguided by outcome or destination. Stravag. 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 Summer geese. Isn't that like a description of something already? North Yorkshire. Steam that rises from the moor when the rain is followed by hot sunshine. Steam that rises from the moor when rain is followed by hot sunshine. Okay, North Yorkshire. Fuck you. All right. Ooh, Latin. Oh, this is good. This will be good. Terra nullius. Nothing plays. See? I can use that. Like, I'm going to go to my terra nullius. And people go, what are you talking about? Oh, that's my nothing place. Uninhabitable land. I fucking get it. Ungive. Northamptonshire. To thaw. To thaw, like, to thaw out. Ungive, right. Those are 20 nature words you didn't know you needed. Brought to you by the Deadly Addictions channel. Wow. Just, this is fucking amazing. That was fucking amazing. So everybody cooped up, taking their... Isolation seriously, good on you. Stay healthy, everybody. I have been healthy, though a little burned out. That's why I'm doing this, just relaxing, smoking a little, rambling on a fucking microphone. I did my coronavirus update. Let's refresh it and see if it's changed in the hour plus. I've been... Live streaming, one hour and 14 minutes and 30 seconds, to be precise. It is 9.59 p.m. Friday, 3.27, 2020. No, the numbers don't look like they have changed, so no new virus information. All right, let's go back. Nope, hey, yo, whoa. All right, so we went on a deep dive for the dog. I think it was worth it, but damn, I don't, I wish I could believe it. Good grammar is the key to effective communication and an upward career trajectory. Oh, fuck off, because fuck off. Use the editor or spell checker. Thank you. I give no shit, really. Now oh, there's another eh, money shit. Yeah, money. Oh, here's an update on politics. It still sucks. All right, there you go. Biden's being forced on us to cheat and fucking Bernie still. The guy has no fucking cognitive functions. He's a fucking maniac, warmonger, liar. Now he's got sexual abuse charges against him. But now fucking vote blue no matter who. You fucking idiot he is. There goes your political update from the Deadly Addiction channel. Politics sucks. Still. Oh, more breaking news on that front as it comes in. I'll keep informing you how shitty fucking politics are.
eventually I might be able to put a a music bed under everything so when I'm doing podcasts that last fucking hours I could uh, better transfer into taking drinks or eat, eating something checking something that came over my phone or moving around things but hey fuck it right this is needed in these times people are home isolated desperate to hear me talk I know I understand so now I'm there for you I'm there for everybody fun times at the Deadly Addictions channel everybody I'm going through my Facebook timeline commenting on shit all right here we go oh and this comment is well worth a serious read hmm is a picture of Trump with a stupid fucking MAGA hat on hiding his dumb hair and his little tiny hands coming out of his cuff of his coat which is fucking hilarious by the way Donny tiny hands Trump it's fucking the picture looks fucking so funny all right so the title is coronavirus overview how political ideology and governmental incompetence can kill you Woof. Yow, wow. So that looks like a atheist fan page post. The best you can say is they have a better percentage of posting real stuff. However, Everybody's a fucking idiot, so even me. Let's see, that looks like something interesting I might hit. What else? Four ways to help small businesses that may. Sh- okay, well, yeah, okay. Help the small businesses, people. But keep your distance. Jesus. Oh, yeah, more kids stuff. Good luck. More power to you. Kids look like fucking energizer bunnies on crack. In a good way. A loving way. I love everybody. Fucking monsters. You're living with monsters. They're growing up. Alright, so I found... Okay, so I went back. So let me hit this one. So we can get really fucking freaked the fuck out. It was a good freak out. Get your fucking juices flowing. Like, oh no. It's a good grammar. Go fuck yourself. I don't like that stupid fucking thing. The long, wild story of the universe in five chapters. Probably very interesting. Mm, nerd I like that alright so we're gonna hit this fucking overview coronavirus thing and see what an obvious political slant it has on it cause it'll probably come from a left or a right leaning very rare you'll see this put out neutrally let's see I gotta admit if I'm correct, this is a pretty neutral site. And by the way, there are sites that you can check other sites on. So you can check to see if Fox News, um, CNN, all your major news outlets. You can verify and check them on certain sites and they'll tell you how many, what's their percentage of getting news right, where they lean left or right. Do they ever post fucking neutral stuff? So you... You can be informed out there, people. Anyway, I'm seeing a site that, if I'm right, is a a pretty neutral site. Atomic scientists, okay. All right. The world is suffering the kind of pandemic that many experts, including those writing the bulletin, have long warned as all but bound to occur. Unfortunately, with a few exceptions, governments around the world, including notably the U.S. federal government, failed to adequately prepare for today's pandemic and therefore responding haplessly as COVID-19 spreads. 
In the United States, the Trump administration's incoherent reaction to the coronavirus pandemic has created a grisly sort of natural experiment in distributed governance. Okay. It might be neutral, but I can see where it's leaning. State and local officials, public health experts, the media, and citizens at large have been left to fill medical service supply and information gaps that would not exist if the central government had anything like a serious handle on this situation. So I can kind of agree here to one thing. The language is a little weird and I'm sensing a pattern to it. However, I understand that premise. If if the government had everything under control and they were prepared and they had things working properly, it would make everything else easier. I get it. Uh, The Trump administration's response to this pandemic has been tactically inept and almost completely lacking in anything like a strategic approach and strategic approach has a link to it. So I'm guessing they're building their argument here and those links will provide evidence in quotations that'll lend credence to their argument. The prior sentence is not to suggest that Trump administration is alone in its incompetence. Pretty smart. Okay, if you're leaning a certain way, blame everybody. The experience of Italy, Spain, and the United Kingdom shows that so-called developed countries of many stripes can respond ineffectively to crisis. Got that fucking right. But until recently, the United States was considered the world leader in public health, the essential linchpin in the world's efforts to monitor incipient outbreaks and limit their spread. The U.S. failure in dealing with COVID-19 domestically is therefore reflective of a larger problem. The erosion of the international infrastructure dealing with major global threats in general. In 2020, go it alone political nationalism in the United States, China, Russia, and other countries around the world will be a contributing factor to the unnecessary deaths of at least tens of thousands and perhaps hundreds of thousands of millions. Parentheses meaning, yeah, okay, you can go, we can get fucking off the rails. Of people in pandemic that could and should have been greatly limited by effective international cooperation. Okay, I see some truth in that too. Yes, if we had a fucking decent foreign policy thing and we had ambassadors and everybody was working in conjunction and places didn't have to fucking have leaks come out because their fucking government was putting the lockdown on shit. Yeah, could have been better. We need cooperation. Done. Gotcha. If carried on long enough, similarly ineffective nationalistic approaches to the major global risks posed by nuclear weapons and climate change will inevitably result in catastrophic catastrophe, sorry, so extraordinary in scope as to make the current coronavirus pandemic seem a minor inconvenience. Okay. What this is saying is the point they're gonna the argument is they're gonna point out all these flaws and say this could be fucking way worse. This could result in a catastrophe if we don't fix these problems. The real question on the table below now is whether leaders of the United States and other major countries will decide that the short-term political benefit of the national exceptionalism may confer is more important than the shared long-term interest their citizens have in survival. Okay. Hmm. It is this simple. To deal competently with the current pandemic and to protect humanity over the long term, The major nations of the world will need to subordinate nationalistic political ideology to international cooperation aimed at the preservation of lives and futures. Makes sense to me. I'll agree with that. You want to go your simple terms at all that bullshit? Sure. To deal competently with this pandemic, to protect humanity over the long term, the nations need to put aside their nationalistic bullshit and get with cooperation. Yes. Put a check mark on that. Yeah. America first and its Russian and Chinese analogs may be temporarily profitable in the terms of domestic political benefit for slogan what? sloganeering national leaders. As a coronavirus pandemic is making clear, however, nationalistic ideologies can be dangerous to human health, sometimes on a vast scale. No fucking shit. Hello. 
Many warnings, little response. The bulletin has covered global biological threats for decades and is a link. So I'm guessing they're going to try to provide evidence that they are viable in this argument that they've been watching this for decades. Now, technically, the bulletin of the atomic scientists is the site. So I guess it could be confirmed if you wanted to look into it. The coverage that has largely revolved around biological weapons, how to limit and, el- limit and eliminate them, and how to prepare for and respond to a bio-attack should a country or terrorist launch one. Our biosecurity experts have, however, also devoted a significant time and space to the need for countries around the world to prepare in concert for national outbreaks of disease, even though they are not the kind of man-made threat the bulletin generally focuses on. So, I'm guessing this bulletin would focus on conspiracies of weapons, bioweapons. It's a thought, but if you want to give them the principle of charity, they look into it non-biasly and give you an update on the status of the world's threat of bioweapons. There you go. There are a couple of reasons for our long, long-standing interest in disease outbreaks, including the coronavirus public pandemic the world now suffers. First, the governments known to have attempted to make and defend against bioweapons have trended tended to research pathogens, anthrax and smallpox, for example, that made the jump from animal reservoirs to human populations. Also, preparations to reduce the impact such as zoonotic disease outbreaks could serve to protect society during an attack involving biological weapons. The public health preparations required to limit the biological carnage are essentially the same in both cases. So, I guess if you're following their work and you're preparing for what they're preparing for, you're going to be helped in this situation anyway. Because they're going to go and look for bioweapons and give you the status of what's out there and what could be used. This knowledge can help you with pandemics that come from animal diseases and so on and so forth. Long before the new coronavirus disease, now officially named COVID-19, emerged in China, bulletin experts made clear that the United States was ill-prepared to respond to either a naturally occurring pandemic or a purposeful bio-attack. Princeton University public health expert and bulletin communist Laura Khan has been especially persistent in regard to natural outbreaks of disease, and there's a link also, which will probably bolster their argument that they've been warning and they've been trying to get people to prepare. A little more than a month before President Trump assumed office, Khan wrote a piece headlined Biodefense and the Next Presidency that argued for an increased public health preparedness to deal with the emerging zoonotic diseases. That is, diseases like COVID-19, another of her columns, another link, written in January of 2019, included sentences that unfortunately couldn't be more applicable to today's pandemic's altered world. Quotes, but imagine the chaos that could ensue if the United States were confronted with an actual crisis that caused by outside forces, such as an influenza pandemic or a bioterrorist attack, with so little trust in government and eroding trust in science due to false information, damn fucking straight, sometimes peddled by those in power themselves, yes, America is vulnerable. Distrust, unfortunately, makes it difficult to prepare or prevent, prepare for, or recover from a major public health emergency. Hello? There's some truth there, a lot of truth, lots of fucking truth. But Khan is no lone outlier. Many experts in and out of government have long urged the U.S. to be better prepared for the possibility of a pandemic, to little avail. In fact, the Trump administration's Department of Health and Human Services ran an exercises in 2019 based on fictional pandemic scenario called, codenamed, Crimson Contagion. These exercises revealed recently in the New York Times another link so I'm sure you'll be able to corroborate that, but I didn't check myself, produced sobering results and another link contained in a draft report October. So there you go. You got fucking links to this bullshit. So it's not going to be pretty, I bet, that had not previously been reported. That drove home just how underfunded, underprepared, and uncoordinated the federal government would be for a life or death battle with a virus. No treatment existed. Ouch. So this is an I told you so fucking article, for sure. The draft reported, marked, not to be disclosed. 
I fucking hate bullshit like that. Laid out in stark detail, repeated cases of confusion in the exercise. Federal agencies jockeyed over who was in charge. State officials and hospitals struggled to figure out what kind of equipment was stockpiled or available. Cities and states went their own ways on school closings. The Times reported, adding quite accurately that those shortcomings are now playing out in all too real fashion across the country. You know, there's nothing like a fucking know-it-all who told who warned you. So, giving them principal charity, you were fucking warned, we should have been prepared. Shame on you. Public pressure for a better government performance. As many news outlets have documented, some governments around the world, including the, among them South Korea, Singapore, and Taiwan, which had previous experience with another lethal coronavirus disease, SARS, have responded relatively effectively to the novel coronavirus outbreak. Here in the United States, however, the failure to plan for and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic has been glaringly obvious. The repeated cuts to the budgets of the Centers for Disease Control, and there's a fucking link there, so it's gonna, you're going to be confirmed that. And other agencies tasked with outbreak control in the United States and around the world, the disbanding of the National Security Council Directorate for Global Health Security and Biodefense, another link, so you could be sure that that's fucking true, and a failure to follow its own strategic biodefense plan, another link, See, this is someone who's building a very strong argument. The Trump administration hollowed out the domestic and international infrastructure needed to respond to a biological emergency. Now, there you have it. So, basically, this is building a very strong argument. You'd have to go through it very detailed to find out where the bias is and if there are fallacies in some of the statements and how they would twist the narrative. But, They're saying the Trump administration, because of its fucking bullshit and its fucking stupidity, hollowed out the domestic and international infrastructure needed to respond. And they build an argument. There are fucking links throughout this whole thing. All right, we continue. It's just fucking, when you read something like this and you go through it and you're not some fucking Neanderthal, it's pretty fucking pretty obvious to that case, but you'd have to go through it and like I said, valid, make valid assessments. All right. The initial slow and inept response to the COVID-19 outbreak appeared early last week to be headed in somewhat more realistic, less overly political direction. President Trump at long last acknowledged the pandemic as real. Designated a natural emergency, allowed trusted experts such as Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, to step into the fore in, public ter- in terms of public communication and began to announce social distancing steps that are at least reasonably aligned with the magnitude of the risk of the pandemic poses. So, I guess they're saying Trump's a fucking idiot. He got. He realized he was an idiot, whether he was pushed by people to get this fucking guy who's pretty decent. And by the way... There's a meme I shared or a fucking picture of the guy hiding his face behind his hands as Trump says stupid shit at the fucking podium. They even brought him on an interview because I followed up on it and he had to say good things about Trump. It's a fucking joke. But anyway. (sighs) At the president, as the president limited for a few days, his downplaying of the pandemic calls for national Unity multiplied, along with suggestions that now is not the time to assign blame, but to act, reduce the scope, and eventually quench the outbreak. Gotcha. Good on that. Yes. Thumbs up. Just the same, the president returned relatively quickly to dissembling about the pandemic, saying last Tuesday that he was always that he always thought the COVID-19 was a serious pandemic threat, even though video recordings of his on-the-record statements completely belie that assertion. So yes, Trump Todds, there is a fucking link here, which will show how stupid and what a fucking liar, narcissistic fucking egomaniac the president is. He has also made assertions about efforts to greatly increase testing and production of equipment to deal with the crisis. Those assertions seem, sadly, to have been exaggerated or simply untrue. 
And this week he has begun talking about an early end to the social distancing effort that aims to keep hospitals from being overwhelmed with COVID-19 patients. Even though the public health experts warn that such an early opening of the U.S. economy could result in chaos and large-scale death. The U.S. federal response to the pandemic will likely continue to lag and be incoherent. This response to COVID-19 is suboptimal, but it seems the reality America must live in and unfortunately die within in the coming weeks. To improve the federal response to the greatest extent possible, public health experts in the United States government will need to continue to push, wheedle, and flatter President Trump in whatever ways that will work to move him toward positive action and outcomes. So we got to fucking coddle this fucking orange fucking idiot. Knowing all the while that he may, be, that he may very well speak and tweet in ways that sometimes sabotage public health policy. Jesus Christ. Two steps forward and one back may be the best America and the world can expect from this particular administration. Meanwhile, public health <laughs> I can't believe this. Meanwhile, public health experts outside the government will have to continue to hold Trump and top appointees and administration rigorously to account. At the same time, state and public, local public health officials will need to act to protect the people they serve in whatever ways they can. <sighs> U.S. citizens also have a role to play. That's you and me. As they cooperate in the mass social distancing that is the best chance for limiting the spread of COVID-19, they too need to maintain political pressure on the federal government. Good luck with that. Via social media and in communication to their representatives in Congress. You'll get the first part, but it'll be half fake shit, half bullshit, half Trump derangement syndrome, half fucking Trump Todd uh, delusional nonsense. And communication to their representatives? Yeah, good luck. To step up its coronavirus response. Unity does not require that citizens cheerlead an incompetent governmental response to a lethal disease. Yeah. Preach it. Preach. Finally. Finally. I think there's more. Finally, as the pandemic plays out, the fact-based American press needs to keep doing what it does best. Jesus Christ. Reporters should continue to ask important, challenging questions even and especially when they are embarrassing to those in power. Good fucking luck. Good luck, because they all suck. The consistent pointing up of difficulties or failures in the governmental response to the pandemic is key component in the efforts to diminish those difficulties and failures. An active, principled, fact-based press is also vital to the suppression of false conspiracy theories and propaganda that are too easily spread in an internet-dependent world. Welcome to my fucking timeline, okay? Welcome to my timeline. You got Alex Jones fucking maniacs, worshippers, Democrats are fucking possessed by Satan, demons and devils, and God is the only answer. Good luck. Fact based press. Fuck out of here. Ugh. Preparing for future global threats. As the current crisis ebbs, and it will, whether in two months or nine or 12 or 18, with more or fewer deaths, depending. Responsible public officials, the fact-based press, Jesus Christ, and the public at large will need to focus on steps that reduce the likelihood and severity of future pandemics. Those plans should focus on restoring the eviscerated U.S. and world infrastructure aims that discover, to discover and deal with emerging biological threats. In a statement in January, the Bulletin Science and Security Board moved the doomsday clock as close as it has ever been to midnight. Okay, so you know the doomsday clock. It's like, how close are we as uh, civilization to fucking destroying ourselves? Well, they keep moving it closer. Uh, they're trying to get it back, but you know, it doesn't work. That is to the end of civilization. In a significant part, world leaders had allowed the international political infrastructure for managing major global threats to erode. It is clear that the infrastructure... For dealing with global biological threats is indeed in disarray and needs fundamental reform that focuses on improved transparency and early information sharing. But the global threat management problem is far larger than the current pandemic. That's fucking nice. 
Regardless of the, uh, the ideology of their leaders, nations and citizens of the world have important interests that coincide. They face common threats that dictate collective action. Nationalism may be useful as a domestic political wedge, but as a framework for effective policy, it is fundamentally unsuited to the many truly global accidental threats, nuclear, climatic, biological, and other, that the 21st century world faces. If the apocalypse arrives, its four horsemen won't be respect. <laughs> its four horsemen won't respect national borders or discriminate by political ideology. They are dedicated globalist, equal opportunity destroyers of lives and civilizations. See, it's you look how you can interject your fucking your fucking beliefs into this shit. Anyway. Keeping them at bay requires coordinated preparation and a cooperative response that is essentially international in nature. The current pandemic is only the latest, in addition to a long, blood-soaked line of evidence that extreme nationalism is a failed and far too often deadly ideology. Okay, I see where that's going. I read a little bit about this. There's truth to that to some extent. A barely dated relic and an utterly bankrupt approach to modern governance. There is plenty of room to accommodate it in history's dustbin, where it has long belonged. We are done. All right. Woo! There we go. Suedo political, scientific, in depth look into how political ideology and governmental incompetence can kill you. I read this from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist. And they seem to run the doomsday clock, which is closer to midnight, meaning yay or ooh, doom or gloom, doom and gloom, hope, who knows, but there you go. It is 10.29 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020, and I am rambling into a microphone. I am Joseph F. Ulsis. I'm a diction master on most social media. And I am bringing you amazing content in these trying times. Yes, I am a sarcastic asshole from Brooklyn. You all know that. Either your family or friends, whoever the fuck you are. I don't know if you're commenting. I haven't checked fucking chat forever. I don't know if nobody cares or listens or whatever. Okay, I see Justin was in there. Um, wow, I did that so long. I don't even know if my stream's still going. And I'm guessing it is. I did not check, keep my eye on disturbances in it. So I won't be surprised if I listen back when I get a chance and that there's stoppages and so on and so forth. However, I haven't had any call-ins or anything like that, which will give me an idea of how well the stream runs. Because when I did the test the other night, I had a friend call in. And it seemed to disrupt the flow. So, as I described yesterday, I am not only on Wi-Fi, I'm on a Wi-Fi hotspot. So, I have no cable in my house. It's not like I have a cable box and I'm hooking up to that Wi-Fi. I'm using a Wi-Fi hotspot from Optimum. I have no cable here. So, this is the worst case scenario. And it's always a bit, well, it's always bad advice. or There's advice out there that says... Don't stream on Wi-Fi. Don't live stream. So that's why I'm doing these tests on Facebook. It allows me to ramble, get used to talking for an hour or two. I do a lot of side work on some channels, and they have streams that go on 24-7, and people join in here and there. In my testing on my own and doing all the practice and recordings, I noticed that my voice would give out around an hour and 20 minutes, and I've been... <clears throat> Trying to build up stamina. There you go. It's a discipline for me. It's uh, in this time of social distancing and managing my time. So I've been doing some artwork and doing stuff for other channels. But I never do anything for my channel because I love everything the way it is. But I'm taking baby steps, thinking of what I would do with a camera. Although I would not live stream with a camera because if this is bad... 
in certain circumstances, it's worse if I'm trying to put a feed up with bandwidth and all that. So the progression might be get cable, get a dedicated cable line. Once I get that, maybe decide on a camera down the line. I'm not really one who says you need to be on camera, but I get that advice a lot. What I would like to do with a camera is probably recorded things like a little more. So I haven't started a real sciences thread and done things on it, but I'd like to go through some of the lectures and uh, university series that are hours long, cut them up and kind of give my idea of the timeline of certain breakthroughs in the medical field and uh, what we've learned about neurology and well, from neuroscience. And that I might like to use a camera and put up a um, some graphics and So now that I'm taking a break and I'm looking back, I could see that OBS disconnected and reconnected. So let's timestamp that at an hour and 50 minutes and about 40 seconds. So I can judge if it, if Facebook smooths it out well enough. Cause I'm not putting a burden on my stream or I'm hard I use a black and white theme. And then it's just the voice. So I'm hoping this is going well. I haven't even kept up to see if anybody was joining live. I'm guessing I got, you know, I see the one. So that's Justin just listening to me fucking ramble. But in the almost two hours I've been on, maybe people have come in and out. Hopefully, if not, you're missing out on some fucking amazing content. We can even recap what I did tonight. And I'm basically just talking to one, one of my friends, but to me, it's different to me. It's like, how can I keep rambling? How can I keep fucking going from article to article? When is my voice going to give out? Are my levels good? Are they good when I come close to the mic and not too far back? And am I popping sounds? Are you hearing me swallow and, all that type of stuff. And it keeps me disciplined and on mark because now I've settled into three videos a week I upload. And those are just things I record, edit, and I keep in the, I call the bank. So this way when I have tough days and, you know, I struggle a little in a particular area, I don't stress out and go to what's in the bank. I put it out. So now I'm trying to see fitting in spontaneous live broadcast live streaming and how that fits into my schedule with doing work when i can doing work for other channels with art so that's what this may mainly is uh me rambling and shitting on people but not by name i just go over the stuff and i give props to some things and You're going to make me fucking hit this, right? You motherfucker. All right, I'll take the bait. I'll take the fucking bait, okay? Fucking see how this locks up my computer, but... Oh, it's a Twitter link. Let's see. One of my sources has given me a link. This could be amazing or it could be fucking big mistake. All right. Where did my source send me? What rabbit hole has he put me on, put me down, sent me down? <sighs> oh, fuck you. Fuck you. All right. So according to my fucking source, motherfucker, he says from his source, which is Twitter, which is 
if I'm correct, a former Army sergeant and a Media Watch co-chair alumni. And he says, multiple sources tell ABC Press Trump turned to former Yankee Alex Rodriguez for advice this week. Source close to Rodriguez described the call as pleasant, adding that Trump was seeking thoughts from A-Rod about the coronavirus response. Holy fuck. Thank you, my unnamed source. For that, that... That... Or inspiring, like I, it makes me feel good that the president's going to a baseball player, a great baseball player, a great baseball player who fucking cheated at the part of his career that we can't figure out. So did that make him great? And then he lied about it on the air live multiple times, but then admitted to it and took his lumps. Okay, I'll give him that. Trump is speaking to A Rod for advice about the coronavirus. This is giving me hope. Because A-Rod's got to be smarter than fucking Trump, right? So, thank you, unnamed source, for, for, for providing content in this much-needed time for my Facebook friends and family, for the pretend Facebook friends and the so-so family that don't interact with me or talk to me or speak to me and comment on things. Yes, I am here providing content in these trying times. It is 10.41 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020. I am neglecting all prior commitments and duties for this to supply my fans and friends, family, much needed content in these times. It's it's beautiful to behold. Uh, it's truly amazing. Yeah, fucking sauce. Don't fucking pretend like you didn't do that on purpose. I gotta smoke extra fucking balls now and fucking burn that vape again. Yeah, I want to know if fucking Trump is talking to fucking A Rod about the coronavirus. Fucking bullshit. But at least he's not like communicating with his dog, right? At least he's not using that fucking communication device and he's asking the dog what the fuck it wants. Because that's where I would fucking place him in this fucking thing. Fucking bullshit. How long did I stream fucking the other night for? Two hours and like 12 minutes, right? I gotta go for longer. That's why I started 15 minutes earlier. See how fucking long, how much weed and uh, flowers and medicine I go through to get through this. But I have awesome friends and sources that are just keeping the content going. But banger content. That's what the kids are saying these days. Banger content. Well, that's actually... I think there's a chick from England who's a friend of mine. So I will get copywritten and struck down now for using a trademark saying from another content creator, thank you. This is what I risk every time I live stream. Every time. And of course, Stuve is hard at work with his family. He's alone tonight. Let's keep him in our thoughts. Some of you, you want to pray? Go ahead. It's fine. He's okay. His children are healthy. But he's alone with two kids. Ages, I think, three something and under. Yeah. Yes, keep them in our thoughts. But 
Wait till he pop up and say hi at some point. That's the wonderful thing about this. It doesn't matter. It's just training for me and practice and amazing content for anybody who wants to listen in. They can go back. It's going to be on my feed. It'll be saved. It's just I'm a hero in these fucking times. By the way, I did a podcast on heroes. That was one of my latest updates. TV show. Fucking best first season ever of any television series, maybe. But the third and fourth season. Pull it out of the rankings of the best show ever in that genre, sadly. However, worth it to watch it if you like it. Heroes TV show. Awesome. First two seasons. This just in from another unknown source. Multiple sources say Trump has been talking to his plants on getting advice for the coronavirus. This is fucking genius because we live in, you know, a relationship with nature. I think it's fucking genius. Who the fuck cares, right? Let me refresh my coronavirus statistical update. And I will give the numbers again in case my audience needs the information. No bias, no spin, data, raw numbers. So, for the coronavirus update, coronavirus cases, 597,185. Deaths, 27,359. Recovered, 133,360. Then we have subcategories. For more information, more data, given in an unbiased way. Active cases, as of now, since I updated the site, 436,466 active, currently infected patients, 412,943, 95% of them, in mild condition, 23,523, 5% are in serious or critical condition. Closed cases, 160,719 cases which had an outcome, 133,360, 83% recovered and or discharged, 27,359, 17% deaths. And the site goes into more, gives you graphs, it gives you more statistics, you can go in, you can look. You don't have to take your social media. I'm looking at Worldometer. I'll put it in the comment section. That's what a professional oops, streamer would do. There you go. Fuck that one up. So that's where I'm updating the stats from. I don't know if it's working, but there you go. It's taking a couple of seconds. And there you can keep up with raw data. If you consider the source valid, you can do your own check. You can go to the CDC or if even they are telling the truth or whoever the links and streams get you. I just chose this and we're keeping it. That's what I'm going with. It is 10.49 p.m., Friday, 3-27-2020. You're listening to Joseph F. Olsis on the Deadly Addictions channel. Yes, that's right. 
I am in social isolation, distancing myself, providing incredible content to the one person who's on the stream listening. But to anybody who could listen to this later, they can get banger content, amazing highbrow, elevated content. If anybody's familiar with the taste of burnt popcorn, will know that I'm entering the later stages of my vape. Highest temperature, burning the spent material because I don't want to clean it and do a refill during a live stream. Although, content alert, I could maybe do that. That'll give me what, 20 minutes maybe? Maybe more. All right. I'm going to burn this out. If my sources don't give me any more hopeful, wonderful fucking links. <sighs> Trump talking to A Rod. We are doomed indeed. We are doomed. Oh dear. Oh dear. All right, let's click around a bit. Let's go back. All right, let's see where this leads me. I'm uh, refreshing stuff on the page. All right, we have a new post and it's uh, for a show. I never heard of it. And there's a meme. And it's uh, me getting ready for work, wondering if today is the day I catch the corona, catch the rona. Okay, it's a kid sitting there, a little worried maybe. I get you. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Edward Snowden warns biosurveillance may outlast coronavirus. Of course, they're going to exploit this. Are you kidding me? Fucking Obama fucking handed over all this bullshit to Trump. No problem. Surveillance. All this bullshit he pulled. I'm going to set the record straight. Obama, great speaker, shitty president. Fuck off. I could care less. I don't keep my bias and fucking root for fucking teams that are pieces of shit because they speak properly. So fuck Obama. Fuck Trump too. Fuck them all. They all sucked. I don't know. Maybe, I think I like Jimmy Carter. Motherfuckers building houses, falling, breaking bones, and just giving back. He doesn't stop. Jimmy Carter for president, 2020. All right, that vape is dead. He's dead, Jim. All right. We are regrouping past the two hour mark. So it looks like I've been streaming for two hours and nine minutes and 17 seconds. It is 10.54 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020. And you're listening to the Deadly Addictions channel. And I am Joseph F. Olsis, addiction master on most social media. Now you know.
All right, that's the coronavirus update. All right. All right, there's a psychology type thing. This site's a little wishwashy, but it says talent. You're born with it. Creativity, you can grow yourself. That's deep. That's fucking deep. And you got that here on the Deadly Addictions channel. Talent, you're born with it. Creativity, you can grow yourself. That's just fucking deep. So you can work on it, people. You have a voice. You have a uniqueness to yourself. I once told a friend I would read a book about socks if you wrote it. And I meant it. Uh, people, certain people, the way they think, the way they form phrases and words and create an image and a picture by natural storytellers. And you could feed this and grow it. If you chose to do it. So write your books, keep your diaries, write scripts, write ideas, draw. Drawing is fucking great. Has a lot of uh, cognitive benefits, psychological benefits. Drawing is good. Even if you can't draw, believe it or not, the studies show. And actually, I think it's consensus of science, but I'm saying studies to be safe. That even if you draw and you're not good at drawing, helps. So, there you go. Don't forget to breathe. Three to five seconds in through your nose. Slight pause. Five to eight seconds out your mouth. Slower than it went in. And you focus, and that's your buffer. I can't fucking believe I got sent to fucking Trump. <sighs> Talking to A-Rod. Okay. All right. What do we got here? Uh, promo. Okay. Advertisement for... A programming course, not a bad option in this day and age. You're sitting home, viruses are all around. Get a career in software, IT, launching websites. And like I'm doing a little bit of artwork, helping a uh, content creator put together thumbnails and overlays and stuff for games and other content they put out. Make a couple of bucks off that. Everything helps. I'm very thankful. All right. What's this? Why UBI is a brilliant idea. Universal basic income. And let's see what the... All right. So this is what starts the article or gives you a, a primer. The welfare state has grown into a weaponized system against the poor. Says Yanis Yorofakis, former Greek financial minister. How could universal basic income solve this problem? And it's a video. I'm going to say, yes, it can be. It could be a great band-aid, a stopgap, an eventual uh, program that could be worked in and streamlined and become part of everyday life and it would be helpful for sure you still want to fix the problems that cause it the need for it you can't have this growth pattern if you look into economics and stuff you know it's it, you go back to what workers were making and what businesses were making and now that gap is so far it's not even funny if you want to put it in terms everybody understands it's like saying back in the day one person can get a job. It could be at Sears. It could be behind a counter. It could be working on cars. Whatever they were doing, they were able to afford a house and support the family. And we all got fucked over. We all got shit on. We got a corrupt system. And now two, fa two family members have to work and they could barely keep the rent going. Try to live in the city. Try to live closer to the city the further you get away doesn't get easier now you have fucking tent cities and people living in fucking 
makeshift cardboard boxes everywhere. Yeah, I'm being hyperbolic, but this is the trend that happens and UBI might be what you need to stop the bleeding, get things under control, get you good plans, make them implement them, get everything to work, give the people what they want, and then fine tune it as you go along. For me, if you want to shore up capitalism, you're going to need socialism, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, libertarianism, and you make it work. So UBI, sure, I'm for it. Implement it in the right way. And all the crybabies who are crying, hey, can't give the freeloaders. <sighs> People are so fucking off track, off base. They, have, they don't even look at things the right way. You know, it's not surprising as I sit back and I listen to certain people and friends and, you know, we'll talk about certain things and just the glaring differences in views on the poor or immigrants. And there's always a, uh, a momentum built by propaganda and bullshit you've heard. But then when you talk to them, you get down to it, they agree with you like, Oh, yeah, I'm not for open borders. I'm for a decent system on checking people. So uh, I'm not a fucking, you know, uh, radical somebody who wants, you know, anybody to be able to come in and out and cultures aren't different. Yeah, they're different. There's some differences and I, I get it. I don't want a wall, though. It's fucking stupid. It's purposeless. It's a fucking ego thing. It's a, I can get this done. It's nonsense. Look at the data, look at the information that's out there. It will not do anything but fucking deplete us of resources. Now, you want to combine that idea with something that'll work? Well, people have been trying to convince these wall people to do it right, to make the wall, but make it a desalinator, solar power. So you can have a wall that's giving people water, storing energy and putting it back into the grid. You're giving jobs to people. Go on, use your fucking heads. It's 2020. Let's get this shit moving. You know you're going to have to change eventually. This is not going to last forever. We're going to have fucking oil out of the ground from dinosaurs and whatever. I mean, let's get with it. Let's start feeding these things into the system. I'm going to build a fucking wall, a sturdy wall, the best, best wall. Yeah, okay, then do it. Make the wall with desalinated things that clean water and provide moisture from the air, that wind sails and power and solar power. You can have new advancements in the walls that help people and on both sides of it. And then add your security to it and your perimeter defenses, whatever the fuck you're going to do. But don't give me some lie, bullshit, ego, fucking trip nonsense. You know, so, but you, when you talk to several different friends on several different occasions, you can see who's open-minded and who's just, you know, taking it as it comes. And those who are already set in their ways and like have a view on everything and have this thing about, you know, anytime you're going to blame the poor, you've been fucking fucked. Anytime you're going to put blame on immigrants or whatever, you've just been fucking hoodwinked. It's just nonsense. And how you figure that shit out is you fucking lose, use logic and reason. You take your intuition and feelings and you hone them in with some critical thinking. And you don't become part of the flock. You don't become a puppet. But, hey, fuck it, right? Vote blue no matter who. Oh, boy. What am I at now? Two hours and 19 minutes. Well... I think I have broken my past time, but I am still okay. I feel I could maybe push it more. Not that I can provide banger, insanely awesome content. I keep it going because, you know, I'm not that skilled yet. However, if you're sitting around and you come across a stream and I'm really sounding like an ass, welcome. To the Daily Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Olsis, also known as Addiction Master. 
and it is 11.04 p.m. I don't care what you put in the live chat. That's what it is for me. That is my reality, my truth. The stream is a lie. All right, so let's go back. Yeah, hardcore. Okay, yeah, we did the UBI. I ranted on that for a little bit. More family friends, though. That's fun. Mm, good to see Facebook being used for a good purpose that it's made for, which is sharing things with your friends and family, not promoting garbage propaganda and misinformation and false news. Cup of coffee is finished. Note the time. Oopsie. That could be a problem. I use my TV as a monitor and I push certain objects and things onto it. It's real big and it gives me an impression of what's going on. It helps me better, but I'm not sure if it just fucked everything up with the stream. I'll assume it didn't. I'll just go on like everything's normal. Nothing's wrong. Right? Nothing's wrong. Everything's okay. I'm alright. Alright, so... Oh, there you go. I don't know if anybody heard that, but... That is the TV computer connection trying to say hi to each other again. But because I have everything running for two and a half hours, an OBS, several YouTubes. Well, no, only one that matters. Two Facebooks, I mean. All right, I gotcha, I gotcha. Hmm. Oh, okay, so I gotta move it again. Okay, gotcha. I hear you. I'm learning. All right, so if my TV shuts off and I don't do it quick enough, I have to put whatever I had back on there. I thought it would go up on its own. We are learning. This is also a learning channel. This is incredible content. Just fucking amazing. All right, so I'm going back to Facebook. I'm looking down. I've covered some of this stuff. and other stuff's not worth it. Um, got Edward Snowden talking. Talented. Yeah, I guess this is self-evident. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like I went through the immediate content of my Twitter feed. Just touching base on some. Getting a couple of deep dives into some political mumbo-jumbo. I kind of agreed with it, but I wouldn't put it out there as my take on things or my view until I dived a little deeper. Although they did have some pretty good articles. And what I'll try to make a habit of is if I choose an article to talk about, I could post it in the link and people could follow it. What a novel fucking idea. Wow. Holy shit balls. Post the fucking link in the chat. And people could see for themselves. They could check it out, read it while I read along. Wowie, zowie. 
All right, so I talked about this. Let's see if I can do this. This will take up some content to get me closer to breaking my record. Let's see, was that? Holy fuck nuts. That better not show up. I, okay, broke it down. Okay. There's a little delay. Like I said, I'm bogging my computer down. My awesome Windows 7 fucking computer. It's just, it's amazing. All right, so yeah, you got it. It's there, the bulletin org. Um, what else did I talk about? Let's see if I see anything else I talked about. Did I go in deep in anything else? What else did I go into? Oh, yeah, this fucking awesome one that took up a half hour of content because I thought it was 12, but it was fucking 20. So I forgot. I did 20 words of, from nature that you did not know you needed. If you missed it, just fucking rewind this. It was epic content. Find it. If I was good, I would timestamp it and put in any comments and another idea. I have those notes for YouTube, but I could apply them to Facebook too. So basically I could, every time I have a content, I could timestamp the content. And there's a way to put the links in the comments, at least on YouTube, and I'll see if you can do it on Facebook, where you can hit that link. Let's say it says an hour and 20, and I put a topic next to it, like uh, politics. You can hit that 120, and it would start the video at that topic. Now, I know you can do that for YouTube. I just haven't had to do it because I haven't done the live stream up there. But maybe what I'll do is when I take these long podcasts and upload them to my YouTube channel as content, I can do it there. And then what I'll do is build discipline and keep doing it over and over and over until it becomes natural and easy for me. And then what I'll do is as I'm doing these podcasts, you know, I'll have a notepad open, punch in when I did this, when I did that. So that's why I'm doing these silly yet wonderful podcasts or streams because I'm learning, getting better. Thinking of new ideas, thinking of old ideas for other platforms, seeing if I could use them here. So what a this is a beautiful age to live in, I'm telling you. Never before could people find all the information that's ever been recorded in human history at their fingertips at a moment's notice. It's fucking amazing. Think about it from a fan point of view. I'm growing up. I'm collecting cereal box stuff to get Team Beat magazine or whatever the fuck it was back then. And you let my favorite superstar. I don't know, can I think of an obscure one? Leaf Garrett. Ah, <laughs> oh, that fuck it was. All right, so I'm gonna let Leaf Garrett know how much I love his one hit wonder song, and I don't know what the fuck it is. Um. Uh oh, I'm getting an alert from the link I posted. Why? What is it trying to tell? What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying? Okay, try again. What does that mean? All right. Oh, you're refreshing the whole page. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it knows that link. Yeah, fuck you. This link sucks. Fuck face. I said, oh, Jesus Christ. Comments. I don't get it, though. I. So I didn't put up the last comment, and when I hit try again, it refreshed something. I don't even know if I'm live anymore. Because it updated the page I'm monitoring my stream from. Well, that's interesting. So, I will learn. I am learning. Wow, it seems that I can't get back to my live producer page. 
Now I was on another page. I updated something and it refreshed my Facebook across the board. Hmm. This could be a weird ending to this podcast because it might have stopped abruptly. It might be going still. I don't fucking know. But it is an interesting test and learning experience, which is why I'm doing it. I am trying to learn as much as I can. And even on the technical end, I'm still trying to hone in on my OBS features like the filters and uh, sound suppression, noise gate, uh, things like that. So I'm always looking to uh, improve and this is a good test as I play around and I start realizing I can alter my pages that are set up with by messing with other pages. So I will be careful. And I'm rambling because it is 11.16 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020. This is the Deadly Addictions channel, and I am Joseph F. Alsis, rambling and playing around with live streaming. Oh, okay. All right, well, I'm still monitoring everything. And if anybody's hearing me, it seems I'm having an internet problem. This is an awesome test at the end of the stream. So happy it happened here. So, if this is recording, it's a good note that I've lost my internet connection. It seems like all there's a limitation on it. So I'm doing a quick refresh of it and it seems to be fixed. Now, my stream didn't stop on my OBS. That should mean that the stream is still live, but there might be a hiccup or a pause and it might be a gap and it might try to smooth it out. Like I said, this is my second Facebook post stream, and I am messing around, learning, seeing how long I could ramble on for, pick topics and talk about them. I'm worried about my the stamina of my voice and how strong it is, and how long I can keep this stuff up for. So it looks like I'm still live. That's good. That's good. All right, so I put, what fucked me up was trying to put another link in there. Let's see what the fuck happens here. That worked. All right, so I fug, fudged up a little. I might have assumed I could open up other things or refresh other things without messing with the original podcast window. However, even with that and refreshing and everything a little slowed down here and there, and even with my internet going out, I think my Facebook stream is still going live. So I'm going to assume that people have heard me. They might've had an inter interference in it. Things might've been jumbled. I'll figure that out after I, it renders and I am able to listen to it. And I have all the people working at my studio go through it and, you know, give me feedback here and there. Then I go to my experts with the really good equipment and they augment my sounds and, you know, make everything pop. And then I send it to my editor and then my editors work on it and they break up my stuff. You know, and then I give it to the... Yeah, you get it, right? So now I'll go back to what I was doing before, and this might give me an indication that I'm still live. However, I don't know. I have not been able to confirm that yet. On my end, it looks like it, but you never know. 
And apparently I'm invited to the new Facebook.com. Try it. Not now. I'm afraid to try it, especially right now. I guess I could do a live reaction to it. That would be fucking interesting. I don't know. Maybe if I get enough fans to... Uh, everybody in the chat, throw in one for check the new Facebook or two for no. Let me count them up. I got to get a paper to count up all the fucking numbers that will be flooding my chat. All right, so the easy way would just be go to my profile, right? Let's see what it's showing. And all right, so I went on my page and it says live now as if I'm live and everything's good. I'm going to assume it is live and we are broadcasting. We are on the air. 11.20 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020. And I am relaxing from being a little burned out, focusing on certain things and certain projects, but I am letting the creativity flow naturally, getting on the mic, talking, getting a little discipline in and the stamina. We're talking for so long. If I ever want to go on these shows in certain communities and be able to talk on the mic, well, I have to have a certain amount of drinks. I'm going to have to take breaks. And also for the quality streaming, I want to know what my limits are on a Wi-Fi. And I explained that I'm not even on a Wi-Fi from people's houses. I'm on a Wi-Fi hotspot from Optimum. And bad clouds, bad weather will fuck everything up. And without too much computer strain, I got no real video except for my feed that I use, which is just... A picture of me with the pipe smoking. Well, not me. It's actually, I think, Eddie or Justin or whoever. And Addiction Master on top. That's it. So that's the feed that goes out. Not color. Black and white. Not too demanding. And then my voice. And I'm getting notifications on Facebook. And someone liked something. So I'm going to assume that I can assume that my assumptions are correct. All right. Well, actually, no, I can't because that notification is from 11 minutes ago. Uh oh. And I don't know. Okay. Oh, the numbers look like they go. You know what fucking happens? Okay, I'm going to tell you what happens right now to all my huge audience. The same thing happens when I write too much or when I do focus on something too much. I all of a sudden realize hours have gone by and I am fucking starving. Thankfully, I'm not thirsty because I prepared with a little honey and some coffee. And I have... Well, I had... A little bit of sugar water. My lips are dry. They're maybe cracking a little. So let's use some moist lip stuff. This is awesome stuff. So we are at the two hour and 38 minute mark, 31 seconds of streaming live. I feel pretty good, except I notice I'm fucking starving to death. Fucking starving. But I'm not thirsty, and my lips feel better. I put a little bit of stuff on my lip. And this feels good. So we'll see. I see someone like the video that's uh, the live stream. So I want to say I cannot be held accountable for using the word banger content. I stole it from you. Yes, I am sorry. I apologize. But I don't know the kids' lang lingo these days. So I decided to use... And I... Yeah, that's right, Demi. I got Corona. I got... Actually, I got Paps Blue Ribbon. That's the type of beer I have. Although I didn't start when I... I didn't drink one when I started. Although... 
now that I'm at the two hour and 39 minute mark of rambling like an idiot, I might start drinking, but thank you for saying hi, Demi. She's also known as anti ordinary to my huge audience that's listening. <laughs> to the friends and family and the pretend friends and so so family and the randos that look for Facebook live streams. Go check out anti ordinary and anti ordinary gaming and the great debate community. The other one. Day fourteen, odd dead. Yeah, you should have seen me go through the... Yeah, well, I know, but now I got to deal with using the word and explaining why I'm all of a sudden talking like Unirock, but no no one on my side knows who the fuck that is, so you're going to get blamed for it. So, when you hear me say... <laughs> Banger content and roll your eyes so hard that you can see your synapses of your brain committing suicide. You can blame Demi, also known as Anti Ordinary, also known as Fucked Up Bobby. And yes, she is that level of bitch. So deal with it already. I've learned to. But this is my turf now. This is, I get to speak and. I get to just ramble on and no one can interrupt me and I don't have to hear feedback. Just unwind and talk now for two hours and 41 minutes because it's 11.26 p.m. Friday, 3.27.2020 and you're listening to the Deadly Addictions channel with your host, Joseph F. Olsis, also known as Addiction Master. Deal with it. Thank you. It's now time for a bowl. I've spent my vaporizer. And I did mark a note when I ran out of my coffee, so I have none of that. I had to put lip stuff on my lip. Yeah, well, it could be blame or it could be, uh, you know, we can go the other way if I become hugely successful and popular and then you could be taking credit for it. So it would be like, you know, it can go either way. I know it doesn't look promising now, but that's right. Know your role. No, everybody has to know their roles. Wow, oh, man, I'm starving to fucking death. No one told me that doing a stream for over two hours, you will forget to eat and realize that you haven't eaten in fucking eight, maybe nine hours. So, I'm taking a note. Because all you're going to start hearing over the mic is stomach growling sounds. All right, so I've been informed that the Deadly Addictions not only has a saying, which Conrad came up with, but now I have a new one. It's the Deadly Addictions channel. Deal with it, get into it, stand for it. Oh, I used something else that you did. I used, um, oh shit, when we first started hanging out or talking, we collaborated on something and Anti Ordinary said something like, it's teamwork that makes the dream work. I thought that was pretty cool. We could put that on a yeah, fucking tombstone, maybe. You know. So let's see how long I go before everything breaks down I had a hiccup before and I was wasn't even sure I was streaming live anymore all right so I'm gonna redouble back on my Facebook stream because it's always fun to shit on people's beliefs and stuff I don't name anybody but I'm sure if people are listening and watching which they're not they know who they are I went through a couple of articles that I posted some took a lot of fucking time and it was stupid but I did it anyway because I want to provide banger content in these trying times because I'm a hero and I'm sacrificing working on artwork for other channels. I am 
pushing, shrugging off my duties and getting stoned on the fucking live stream. All right, let's look. Here's another meme. Here's a meme. Passes in 2020, 2010, Facebook. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that was cute. Yes, yeah, fuck it off. I don't know. I don't know if I should do a deep dive into this Edward Snowden ones. Bio surveillance may outlast coronavirus. Of course it is, because they're going to exploit it and use it to fuck our rights over to say, oh, yeah, we everybody has to have a biochip in their fucking arm and whatever the fuck that is. We'll get, we'll get to that eventually. No, you fucking deserve it. Everybody deserves this, because this is I am the creation of sitting in a fucking pit of darkness for five years while I watched... Facebook set on fire and Twitter become a fucking cesspool and I was exposed to YouTube, thank you. And now I'm fucking responsible for this shit, so you created like there's that line in Batman, right? You created me, I created you. Everybody's to blame here. Every fucking family member on my list, every friend, every Twitter war, every GDC wise ass comment I made and received. No, this is what everybody deserves. So I went through my fucking Facebook content. At uh, two hours and forty six minutes in, I'm doubling back and I'm seeing the same shit. So now I got to rely on being hungry and talking. Like a mental patient, but we cannot disparage those mentally ill. I believe in meditation and breathing exercises. And I bother everybody with it and make cute little comments at the end of my statements. Hoping to manipulate people into breathing properly. All right. So let's do a coronavirus update. No spin, just data, just the facts here at the Delhi Dixon's channel, 11.32 p.m. Eastern Time, 327-2020. Coronavirus cases, 597,185. Deaths, 27,359. Recovered, 133,360. Now we'll break it down into subclasses or subcategories or whatever the fuck the proper etiquette is. Active cases, 436,466 currently infected patients. 412,943, 95% in mild condition. 23,523, 5% serious or critical condition closed cases 160,719 cases which had an outcome that's 133,360 83% recovered and or discharged 27,359 17% deaths so there you have your coronavirus update just the data, you have the feed, you have the link, you can slam, you can get me for misinformation if I'm incorrect, but this seems the site I chose that gives an update, you can refresh it, the world meter and there you have it, where you get real news, you fuck you, fuck, all right, just, all right, look, I actually forgot I was starving. Okay, I read the data and I come back and I see hamburgers and cheese. I I ate eight hours ago was a cheeseburger. I cannot have this in my live chat. This isn't the GDC live chat where anybody could say anything they want. I'm the overlord here. This is my Facebook stream, my test, my, oh, 
I'm fucking starving. I can't eat potato chips, right? Because that'll crackle all over the fucking mic. There's no one here with me, so it's not like I could do that. What could I do? Uh, I could... I got to get... In, I got it. I got to get intravenous. I will get a setup for when it was with the doctor's use at the side of the hospital. I'll get the plasma bag. Will that stop your hunger? Would that make you not hungry, though? No, right? Fuck. I'm fucking ignoring you. So fuck your hot dogs. Fuck your pizza. Fuck your macaroni and cheese. I have a skill which allows me to compartmentalize my input of information where I could take my keys and put them somewhere and make myself forget. So fuck you very much. And I will continue with my rant because I am streaming for two hours and 50 minutes and 26 seconds. It is 11.35 p.m. Friday, 327-2020. All right, the last thing I fucking need is my fucking streaming partner, my co-conspirator on my trailer reactions, joining up with Anti-Ordinary. This will not end well for anybody. You might break the internet. There is a real danger here. I don't know who I should contact. Oh, fuck. I'm going to have to block. I'm going to have to block people. That's what I'm going to have to block people. I made you a fucking cheeseburger, motherfucker. You came here and ate a fucking cheeseburger. Fucking what? 25 hours ago, fucker? That's bullshit. How do you fucking betray me? Come on. Say it. You know I fucking made a burger last night and you ate one. A cheeseburger. It was pretty fucking good. Throw me under the bus. At least say it was good. Don't fucking leave me hanging so Demi thinks I make shitty cheeseburgers. Fuck. All right, okay. If I had a shake, that would be awesome. See, I'm thinking now. See, I'm using my brain. I'm a critical thinker. Shake. Gotta get shakes. I gotta make shakes. I gotta get a blender thing. Because I could be... I'll gain fucking 30 pounds, but fuck it, right? These are the sacrifices we make in these trying times so I can bring content to the much-needed people on Facebook, particularly my friends and family and the not-so-pretend friends and not-so-family. This is important content I am providing. That's smearing. That's... That's like, what is it, libel or slander? Which one is it? Because I'm getting a lawyer. I know fucking lawyers, motherfucker, okay? I communicated once with Steve McRae. Okay? I have receipts. Yeah. So he says it was good. Good, see? All right. At least we have fucking honest reviews. All right. Well, nothing's going to fucking help me now. Nothing's going to help me now. Because I'm fucking starving out of my mind. And any second, the fucking mic is going to pick up the stomach. Because I don't think I have it high enough for sound suppression on the OBS. The fucking noise gate's going to open up just for my stomach alone. So now I have to talk constantly. So my stomach growling... Is not interfering with my podcast. No one warned me of this bullshit. Nobody. No. That's partially true, but still, it's not like he doesn't have some freedom. It's like, you know, more like the difference between a slave and an indentured servant. So,
All right. I don't have any. I don't think I can do anything quick enough. How much? Okay, I do have cold cuts. I have ham. I could probably stuff a huge amount of ham into my mouth and chew it real fast. Oh, I could... I could take the ham, roll it in a piece of Swiss with no bread on it. Um, people might not know. If I have a bread, I got this country bread. It's like real thick and... I can't do that. I need something quick and fast. Ashes. I got fucking lots of ashes. Okay, ashes. I could. Ashes are good, right? Because it's a sign that there's minerals in it. Yeah, for, for, for everybody who's not across the pond in some dreary, foggy, rainy, chilly, dreary, gothic place like London or wherever the fuck it is. We don't know what Plonker is. Okay. Fuck the Plonker. No, I'm trying to hit the three hour mark. I got five minutes left. I can do it. I can do it. I can do anything. Yeah, I got, I'm at two hours and 56 minutes of fucking blabbering like an idiot. And I'm trapped in social isolation, social distancing, which I've been practicing for a long time, way before the virus. And I like that meme picture I posted. I don't have cake. I don't have fucking snacks. So fuck off with that. I'd have to go out and get in and get some, but I probably could make an egg and I don't know what the fuck that is. It looks like a, I can't tell from this small thing I'm using. I can do that too. I can make a sandwich of some kind. Oh, I'm afraid to hit this fucking link. Jesus Christ. I never know what the fuck I'm going to get into. All right. So I have this just in one of my sources is sending me a link oh god if anybody didn't know the last link he sent me was breaking news that multiple sources have found out that Trump had contacted Alex Rodriguez yes that's right A-Rod formerly of the Yankees and I think the Rangers who got caught cheating who lied on the air about cheating with steroids he went to him for advice on the virus the coronavirus Okay, so this just in, Hasbro releases full episodes of the original 80s G.I. Joe animated series on YouTube. Fucking A. G.I. Joe, because knowing is half the battle. Go Joe. That's my name, so how do you fucking lose? That is awesome. It's probably outdated and cringy as fuck, but for kids now, that's awesome. Awesome. All right, that was good content. Thank you, unnamed source. Whew, what fucking content you're getting here. This is holy shit. This is just maze balls. All right, I'm at 258 minutes. I'm probably winding down now. Let me see if I could do this right. So, what I would do is I would just open up my outro from my clips that I use. And if I open it and stop it fast enough, it won't play. Let's try that. Okay, come on, come on. Quick fingers, don't delay me. Oh, shit. All right. Should be the end of the stream. Thank you, everybody. I'm at 2 hours and 58 minutes, so... See how long this lasts. And I'm talking over it to check my volume against it. I'm going to lower it. Because I'm wondering what it would sound like with a better music underneath while I'm talking. So if I go on break, I can up music. So I keep posting fucking food shit because I'm going to go in about 8 pounds as soon as this ends. Thank you very much. Yeah, come on to advice on how to record your testing. Amazing. Oh, there's a fucking guy who lied and cheated with steroid abuse. 
I guess I know I'm playing with the sound volume. I'm trying to get a gauge on it when I listen back. Don't even know if you can hear the music. How's that? Ha ha ha. Not even sure. I could be babbling right now and no one hears anything. Alright, I've broken the three hour mark in my quest to gain more stamina. I did a Facebook live stream again. Awesome content, much needed in this dark time of viruses and anti ordinaries. We are at 11 11.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 327 2020. You have been listening to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Olsis. Okay, yeah, I was I was playing with it. Even at the lowest, it sounded too loud? Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. There's a gain button that maybe... Ah, uh, shit, okay, there was gain up on that. Thank you. All right. So, that'll be the reason why I'm doing these, to gain more stamina, see how long I could talk, and to see how my... Equipment is going, organizing things, and getting some content from some awesome people. Thank you very much. And I think that'll be it, everybody. Stay healthy. I'll see everybody soon.